right now I'm doing a helical move at a 10 degree angle until we get down into the bottom of the material. So now the tool is at the final depth. We're one inch deep. And now the C-axis is gonna be working together with the milling head to open up the diameter. I'm doing a pretty big cut with a 60% step over. axis and the milling spindle are turning together and we're making a octagon with that. I wasn't really sure what to expect when I saw the tool going straight into the middle of the part. That was a pretty big depth of cut we were taking with the 60% radio so I'm really impressed with the Harvey 1TE. The blue chips flying off and of course the SMX 3100 is a beast. Now Neither I nor Jesse have ever actually broached on a mill before, so you're gonna be right there along for the ride with us. Should be cool. So yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Just watching how that pushes in there with so much ease is really fascinating because if you watch it in slow motion, you can actually see the wobble brooch is going around, only cutting on one tooth at a time, and that's why it's so easy just to pop that hexagon right in there. Let's put the OD spline on now. So as you can see here, we rolled up some burrs on this DVF 5000, but that's because we didn't have an undercut. Not too big of a deal, but here we're gonna have to go back in and rerun our tool and clean it up. So the first operation here is just a material prep operation. We're going to deck the top and the sides. Go ahead and put a dovetail on it. Then I'm going to come in with a Kinemetal Drill Fix Pro and I'm going to do some chain drilling to get rid of the bulk of the material on the inside of the part. Now we're using the Drill Fix Pro because of its centering capabilities. Most indexable drills doesn't have really good centering capabilities, but the way the inserts designed on the Drill Fix Pro, it allows it to center itself really well, making it good for chain drilling. So after our drill runs, we're gonna come in with a core five and rough the outside. Now this is just a basic roughing pass. We're just gonna get rid of the excess stock that's gonna be around the bias for operation two, so we don't have a lot sticking up for when we start tabbing the part. So after this tool runs, that's gonna complete op one. Now we're gonna start this out by using a three quarter inch core five. Now this is a five times D tool. When it starts rough in the inside, we won't be able to get all the way through. So we're gonna come in from both sides and get as much as we can. Next, we're gonna come in with a three quarter inch duo lock that is sticking out seven and a half inches. Now, we've gotta be very careful with this tool because it has a steel shank. So, harmonics is gonna be able to be built up in this tool very easily. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna start vibrating that tool and it's just gonna bounce off our material if we're not careful. Now, we're gonna drop in and rough away that material that our core five couldn't reach. Now, we have to rough the OD. Now, this is where we're gonna start revealing those thin walls 
everything's going to get super thin so, so when we start finishing this outside it still could chatter and ruin everything that we've done up until now Now that the core five has roughed the outside, now we're going to call up a 3 8 tool and start finishing everything. Now coming up, we've got a very difficult feature to machine that's going to have several challenges to it. Now this is where a cam software can make or break you, especially when you're programming on a five axis machine. And I've got to hand it to Master Cam. I love the direction that they have taken their multi-axis modules in because not only are they extremely intuitive, they give you several options for machining strategies. Now normally you don't have that luxury when something is that intuitive. So for these pockets and holes on the face, I'm gonna come in with a small drill and drill those out just to get rid of the bulk of the material. Next, we're gonna come in with our Picatinny form tool. Now we could do this with multiple tools, but it's just easier and I know that the shape is gonna be correct if I go ahead and use a form tool. So that makes it to where I just have to make one pass down each side and that whole Picatinny rail is complete. All right, next we're gonna come in and finish our holes, rough our slots, and do the grooves that's on top of the Picatinny rail. Now for this, we're using a 3 16 end mill that is necked back one inch. I like to use neck tools whenever I can because it makes the tool so much more rigid. Now we don't need that whole length of cut, we just need the reach. So in order to keep it as rigid as possible, that's where neck tools really shine. All right, next we're gonna rough and finish those pockets in that face. Now these are just weight reduction pockets. They're not really doing anything. Next, we're gonna call up a quarter inch ball nose and it's gonna finish some of these angled walls and fillets that the 3 8 tool couldn't reach. The quarter inch ball nose can't reach everything because of the design of this, so we're gonna come in with a 3 32nd ball nose and finish those areas that the quarter inch couldn't reach. So now we're gonna come in and finish these slots, which are designed for the M-Lock accessories. And our tool is an eighth inch tool that's hanging out a little further than we want it to. And that's because this one vertical slot is actually all the way through the part. So we had to stick this tool out a little bit far in order to be able to get that length that we needed for that. So we're gonna to have to slow things down just a bit to make sure that we don't get any chatter on these slots. What this tool is about to do is gonna blow your mind because the pocket that it's doing is otherwise impossible. And a lot of machinists are gonna look at this feature in this part without watching this video and be like, how the hell did you do this? Now I'm gonna turn on my transparent mode so we can actually see what's going on with this tool. On the back side of this part, on this angled wall, there's gonna be two more slots, but these M-Lock accessories need a certain wall thickness. And because of the shape of them on the inside, we've got a big fillet coming into where that wall is. So we really need a flat in there to make sure that that wall thickness is correct. So to do that, they've added these pockets. Well, the problem is there's no way to do those pockets unless you do them with a key cutter. The problem with a key cutter is the pocket width is wider than what the head of the key cutter can actually reach because you would have to go through that slot. So what I did is talk with Brandon and their team about instead of making this a square shoulder pocket, why don't we add a radius all the way around? That will allow me to come in with this eighth inch ball nose. And as you can see, we're just coming in with vertical passes through this end and utilizing our five axis machine we're able to put this feature in the part that would otherwise be a real pain to figure out how to do. Now another thing that's making this possible is I'm using a Heimer shrink fit extension. Now I love using these shrink fit extensions because not only can they go into other shrink fit holders, 
but they offer you a very slim design that allows you to get into tight reach places like this, which you're always doing on a five axis machine. So as you can see, this holder is getting extremely close to the edge of this part, but we're able to stay away from that and we're also able to reach deep inside the part. All right, next we're just gonna take an eighth inch chamfer tool and we're gonna chamfer everything that it can reach on the outside of this part. Next, we're gonna come in with a lollipop tool and that's going to chamfer the back side of our slots. Because if you've ever worked with me in the past, you'll know that I do not like to deburr anything. So this is gonna make sure that when this part comes off the machine, everything has a chamfer, everything is deburred, and I'm not gonna to have to do any manual work to this part. So now that we have everything finished on the top side, now we can start roughing away this material that's on the back side of the part. Now we've left that on here this whole time to make sure that we have rigidity in this part when we're finishing all of this stuff on the top. But we're not gonna take it all the way what we should. We're gonna leave some there to make it rigid for when we finish this angled wall. We wanna kind of take this down in certain sections. That way we still have rigidity, but we get this entire back wall finished. So once we've rough and finished as much as we can on the back wall, we're gonna come in and make a slot in the center to reveal our two tabs. Once we do that, the only thing that's left to do is to come in and actually make these tabs to the thickness that we need to break this thing off. And for that, I'm making it 30 thousandths thick. So after we do that, op two is complete. And as you can see, we almost done this entire part all in one operation. I just got this out of quality. Travis says it is perfect. So I'm gonna go try to find a box so we can get this thing shipped today. Oh my God, I'm Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, anyway.